So the International Coaching Federation, it's the global body of coaches. It's not specifically health coaches, it's coaching in general. And they have had a set of competencies, which they've defined over the last decades. They found that most of the competencies that they've had for the last 25 years are still very relevant. But essentially some of them are tweaked and some of them are rehashed. I want to focus now on what are the core coaching competencies of the International Coaching Federation. Each category line has about 10 or so sub bullet points. It's quite a detailed document. Part of your homework will be to go into that and actually review it and go in detail and reflect on what we've done in this course. So let's start off by sharing the ICF coaching competencies. So ICF coaching competencies. There's a few different categories. The first category is foundation. Now, in foundation, what do we mean? The cornerstone of coaching is demonstrates ethical practice. There's a variety of different elements around ethical practice, around confidentiality, honoring the client, honoring the client's agenda, being a professional, and they're defined in the ICF coaching competencies. Another part is embodying a coaching mindset. And I'm going to share with you the PDF now so you'll be able to actually see some of these because these ones are interesting for, I think, for us to explore. So I'm sharing the PDF with all of you now. So you'll see here, demonstrates ethical practice. Firstly, the definition is understands and consistently applies coaching ethics and standards of coaching. You'll see here, demonstrates personal integrity and honesty, is sensitive to clients' identity, environment, experience, values, and beliefs, uses language appropriate and respectful to clients, abides by the ICF code of ethics, maintains confidentiality, maintains the distinctions between coaching, consulting, psychotherapy, and other support professions, and refers clients to other support professionals as appropriate. These are all important points that we have been continually referring back to throughout the course. Now, let's go into this next part, which is embodies a coaching mindset. So what actually is a coaching mindset? Definition, develops and maintains a mindset that is open, curious, flexible, and client-centered. With this, acknowledges that clients are responsible for their own choices. Second, engages in ongoing learning and development as a coach. Three, develops an ongoing reflective practice to enhance one's coaching. Four, remains aware of and open to the influence of context and culture on self and others. Uses awareness of self and one's intuition. Develops and maintains the ability to regulate one's emotions. Mentally and emotionally prepares for sessions. And seeks help from outside sources when necessary. These are all different elements framed in different words and the like about topics that we've covered throughout this course. And all of this course is focused both on coaching in general, health coaching, but it meets all of the ICF competency models. So I wanna ask you a question now, and that is what does embodies a coaching mindset mean to you? And I'd like you to share that in the comments. Share the first thought, the first feeling that comes to your mind around what is a coaching mindset to you and how do you embody it? Darren, curious. Jenny, being completely present with the client. Kelly, a growth mindset for self and client. Karen, curiosity and openness. Ashley, curious, developing trust and rapport, positive. Julie, empathy and openness. Joanne is listening. Jeff, opening and leading. Michelle, centered on listening. Tanya, preparation. I found if I sit down quietly a few minutes before going onto a call, I have a much better mindset. Matt, forward in the action, deepening the learning. Samantha, empowerment. And Lisa is curious and empathy. Katrina raises a really interesting point there. People are great resources themselves. We can see this as a similar thing. 
So what I want you to do at this stage in the course, as we continue forward and you pursue your own coaching journey after the course finishes, I want you to periodically reflect on how do you embody a coaching mindset? There's going to be times that certain areas are prioritized in your journey. And there's going to be areas of reflection. There's going to be areas for you to focus on and train areas for you to work on and develop, but it's a really, really important part to continually self reflect on what is a coaching mindset. Have I honored my ideal coaching mindset and what do I need to do to move forward? I'm going to ask the other instructors on the call tonight, Ulrika, can you share with us what does a coaching mindset mean for you? Um, a coaching mindset for me is uh, being curious uh, for the client. <laughs> um, sometimes we get curious as coaches, but I think the, the mindset here is to make sure that your curiosity is beneficial for the client. Uh, it's empathy and openness, uh, but also the belief that the client uh, is a greater person. The belief in that, that the, the client has the capacity to do what's required. That for me is a, a coaching mindset. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, if we go forward and we move on to the next part of the ICF competencies, there's some really very specific areas that we're going to briefly touch on. So we've covered the foundational elements. The next part, point B, is co-creating the relationship. So what do we specifically mean here? The first part is establishes and maintains agreements. You'll reflect back on our elements around discovery session, the way that we work with a client, the way that we're introduced to a client, the way that we set boundaries, expectations, alignment, we seek transparency, and we have agreements around that. The next part is cultivates trust and safety. Nothing in coaching would work without an element of trust and safety. And the ICF core competencies define the various different elements there. The next part, maintains presence. Coaching presence, and I think you'll find this in the variety of different scenarios that we demo, that we break out. There's a variety of different times that you can feel different presence. There's sometimes you're there as a coach and you know that you're entirely with your client level two, level three, listening. There's times that you're stuck in your own head, you're in level one listening, that you, there's a less of an element of presence. It's something to continually focus on and something to be really, really tuned to because you're continually growing your coaching presence. Now, communicating effectively. Communication is the cornerstone of coaching. With that, how do we actually communicate effectively as per the ICF coaching competencies. Number six is listens actively. Now, we spoke about and we explored in a previous lab the different levels of listening. Level one, within your own head. You're with your own thoughts. Level two is you're wholly engaged and focused in the moment with the person that you're engaging with. Level three is beyond you. It's the environment the energy, it's the vibe, you could hear a pin drop. So listening is a skill that we've been practicing and focusing on. And an important part that I think came through in the post lab surveys was people were talking about once we spoke about it and named the different types of listening, that they could now sort and give a name to the way that they were operating, that they previously knew they were doing it, but they just didn't have a way to articulate it. So what else is part of communicating effectively? Evoking awareness. Really important part, evoking awareness in the client from the coach through all the different techniques that we've explored. D, cultivating learning and growth. Now, what do we specifically mean by that in the ICF coaching competencies? That one there, it's around facilitating client growth, which is the reason why we are all working here as coaches. Now, there's a variety, again, of different techniques. And if you go into the PDF, you don't have to do it now, but if you do it later, I want you to explore.
explore and dive into each of these different areas. There'll be specific parts there around intuition. There'll be specific parts around power questions and the way to use power questions. There's all the different techniques that we have covered throughout this course that are recognized as the International Coaching Federation's core competencies of coaching. And the part that I urge you to reflect on is now that we've weaved a narrative together and we're towards the very end of the course, reflect back on where you started with, where have we got to now, and the journey that we've had, and name the different techniques that we've covered. Look through them all and connect them to the competencies of a coach.